So this is actually uh, thalassemia, and it's not alpha or beta. This is actually uh, Lepore Baltimore, which is a delta delta beta thalassemia. Uh, it looks the same. It's still microcytic. You have a lot of these target cells. The other name for target cell is codocyte. Don't miss a test question because you don't know the other name. Like, yeah, <laughs> always know the variable variant names for things, right? And you never this know. target cell, for whatever reason, it's has, double target, has, huh? has a double target, yeah. So if you think about like structurally what is happening there in order to see a target cell, instead of your, you have like a bulge in, your, in the middle of your biconcave disc to be able to see that. Mm -hmm. And... A lot of a lot of target cells, but you often see a lot of target cells in iron deficiency. So, so both thalassemia and iron deficiency can have it. Okay. It's not gonna not gonna really help. But if you've been treating a patient with iron deficiency or your iron uh, panel comes back as not iron deficiency and they've had persistent microcytic hypochromic anemia for their entire lifetime, you really should be thinking about thalassemia or something along that lines. Uh, if they've had a history of normal like normal you know, hemoglobin, all those values, then it's probably something acquired versus something. Oh, if it's been normal before, and yeah, right. that doesn't make sense. Because thalassemias are like genetically inherited, right? And they're right. hemoglobin neuropathies. So if, or well, some, something's wrong with the hemoglobin? So I consider hemoglobin neuropathies to be um, st sort of structural aberrations that causes misfoldings. And oh. thalassemias to be um, quantitative oh, deficiencies. Okay. Sort of. So when you have an alpha thalassemia, you're missing alpha chain. When okay. you have a beta thalassemia, you're missing beta chain. Oh, the I see. The core is a little bit weird because it it's not that you're sort of missing your beta chain. It's that your beta chain and your delta chain are like one chain uh, because of how oh. the mutation happens. And then to test for thalassemia, you do a hemoglobin electrophoresis, though? Is that one of the ways you yes work them up? Yes and no. Oh, okay. Okay. So... Sorry, I'm leading you way off the path. That's I, okay. I... I like this. So hemoglobin electrophoresis can be helpful for beta thalassemia trait. Oh, okay. If you don't have concomitant iron deficiency. Okay. So if you have iron deficiency, it will artificially decrease your hemoglobin A2. And in beta thalassemia trait, what you're looking for is an elevated hemoglobin A2. So if you have both of them together, you might have an abnormally oh, normal okay. hemoglobin A2, and you might miss it, which is why we say you can't really do hemoglobin electrophoresis for this if the patient is iron deficient. Treat the iron deficiency first and then come back. So um, this sounds like a whole entire topic for a, for another video. <laughs> <laughs> so alpha thalassemia, what you're looking for would be like hemoglobin H and Bart's. And with some of the newer techniques, yeah, you can maybe pick those up, but at least on the gels, it would run right off the gels. Oh, okay. So honestly, your better test for alpha thalassemia is going to be molecular PCR. Oh, okay. Okay.